Lord God, bless every person that's hearing this program today. In Jesus' name, you're hearing the program, Gain to Know Jesus. And my name is Harris Kakalidis. In today's program of Gain to Know Jesus, we're going to talk about the will of God. It is important to note that there are two wills of God. One is revealed to us, and the other is in secret. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. In today's program, I desire to speak about God's secret will. In our next program, we'll focus on His revealed will, what God demands from us that we can know and we need to do. The secret will of God, though it might concern you, who you will marry, how your kids will be, but it is not your business to know even if it involves you. God has a secret counsel. All we are to be concerned about is to do His reveal will, which we will talk about in our next program. But in this program, I wish to talk about his secret will. A event my past came to my mind as I thought about this message. I, I had I've been saved for 19 years now, been serving the Lord, and I was just about two or three years serving the Lord when I started preaching, and, and I was used mightily by God in praying for people, especially people that were sick. I got to see some occasions where people were healed and there was this lady who was in the church I was going to at that time who was in a wheelchair she had no legs and I saw in my mind a vision that if I will pray for her she will receive her legs I saw her walking with legs so I prayed for her I closed my eyes real tight as I was praying for her. <clears throat> when I opened them, I expected to see her new legs on her body, but I saw none. I believe God was to answer this prayer. So I prayed again with my eyes closed, and I opened them, no legs. I prayed for her to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I prayed till I almost lost my voice, but no answer about the legs. Then I told her to receive her legs by faith because I saw in a vision of her having a new pair of legs. About a week passed and she came to church with her new pair of legs. But they were not flesh and blood, they were wooden. She had been trying to apply for them for years and was always getting denied. And when I prayed for her that night, the following day she received a letter saying that she was finally approved. Here is an example of God's secret will and God's reveal will. God had revealed to me that she was going to receive a new pair of legs. My mistake was in believing it was going to be that night. And it was going to be when I prayed for her that she was going to receive it at that moment. But God had a secret plan for her in receiving them. And they were going to be wooden and not of flesh. As time goes on, many times, God reveals His secret will when it is accomplished. There are many people who want to know God's secret will, like who would I marry, what would happen to my kids when I die, and so on. And to them, I will reply, Focus on doing God's reveal will, and in time, He will show you His secret will. <clears throat> Let me give you another example. There was a missionary who had a burden, a burning desire to go and preach to cannibals in the island. He spent many years praying for this, and finally, on the month he was going to go, he had a car accident and lost his left leg and his right arm. <laughs> and had to wait more than a year to be able to walk again through a wooden leg and to learn how to use a wooden arm. But he felt 
that desire come about him more stronger about going to these cannibals and preaching the word of God to them so he went and as he got to the place where this these cannibals were at he heard them say that they was going to eat him as he was about to try to run his wooden arm flew <clears throat> out and knocked the one of the tribesmen who was the chief and a witch doctor and as he was trying to run, his left leg flew out and broke some teeth of a person that was close by him. And as he crawled on the ground to his leg and arm, the tribes, men and women that were there, fell on their knees and worshipped to God, God of, of the man that was preaching, which is Jesus, and said, There is power in this man's God. And this event caused many to come to Jesus. The secret will of God was for him to lose his leg and arm so he could use him in a way he never imagined he was to be used. Let me name one secret will of God. It is that no one should know the time of the coming of Christ till he comes. Matthew 24 verse 36. Above that day and hour, no one knows not even the angels of heaven but my father only mark thirteen thirty two. but of that day and hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father and there has been many predictions throughout the years of christianity and they were all wrong about when jesus is to come i can remember jehovah witnesses predicting that jesus was going to come in 1975 or before that, they predicted that Jesus was going to come back in 1914. And they predicted many things about Jesus coming, and he never came. Then there was Harold Camping, it was Lindsay. Uh, many have predicted Jesus coming, William Miller. And Jesus have proved them wrong. Because it's God's secret will when Jesus is to come back. Um, there's also another secret will. When God is going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Acts 1 verse 6 to 7. Therefore when they had come together they asked them saying. Lord will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel. And he said to them. It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority some will say this happened when israel was established in 1948 as a home for the jewish people and i will say no they do not control their own state to do as they see fit they can't even rebuild the temple again they have no permission to do any of those things they control their lands they might have a, a government that's jewish but they not they don't have full control over Israel. They they need permission to even do that. To continue, there are other things which can be spoken about the secret will of God, like how Christ was to dwell in the believer by faith. This was a mystery, something hidden from human knowledge, which is in the New Testament explained more fully. Colossians one twenty six to twenty seven, the mystery which has been hidden from ages. And from generation, but now has been revealed to the, his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Bible speaks about mysteries and secret wills or decrees of God, which in time will be revealed to us. Some of these things, God in time had revealed already others he will reveal in the book of revelation it says revelation 10 verse 5 to 7 it says and the angel whom i saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are in it the earth and the things that are in it and the sea and the things that are in it 
that there should be delay no longer but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel when he is about to sound the mystery of God will be finished as declared in his servants the prophets I do not know what are you going through at this moment but God knows why you are going through the situations you are in and he will use this event in your life for a purpose which only he knows about to bring glory to Jesus and, and give him honor God bless you and I'll see you in the next program where we will study the reveal will of God what God has revealed about his will if you enjoy this program feel free to make a copy and give it to a friend and that way they will get to know Jesus as well bye Lord God bless every person that's hearing this program today in Jesus name you're hearing the program gain to know Jesus and my name is Harris Kakalidis and in today's program of Gain to Know Jesus, we are going to talk about the revealed will of God. In our last program, we talked about the, His secret will. In this program, we will talk about what God has revealed for us through His Word, the Bible, what, what He wants from us. The first thing we could say about God's will is that if you're not saved and serving Him, this should be done first of all before you continue in the subject John 6 verse 40 says and this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day notice it is God's will for you to believe in Jesus and that Jesus will raise you up in the last day in the resurrection if you are meant to be saved because um, if you start studying the scripture you find out that not everyone's going to be saved some people are going to be in hell and if you come to faith it is his will for you to be baptized and to have fellowship with other believers mark 16 verse 16 he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned Hebrews 10 verse 25 not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more as we see the day approaching also it is only fair that in speaking about a believe believers and who are they to marry if they desire to get married they should marry someone who believes in Jesus Christ just like they do they're not to be married with a non-believer. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 to 18 says, Be not unequal yoked together with non-believers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what occurred has Christ with Bela, the devil? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Do not touch with what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty and if you are married to an unbeliever do not leave them for you do not know if they might be saved in the future through your witnessing most likely through a godly life that they see you living they'll see a change in you and they will want to have that change in their lives as well the best way to to witness to a loved one is by the life that you live in their eyes 1 Corinthians 7 verse 13 to 15 says, And a woman who has a husband who, is not, who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean, but now they are holy. 
But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. It is God's will for Christians not to give themselves to sexual sins. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 to 7, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarn you and testify, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but to holiness. 1 Peter 4, 2, that he no longer shall live the rest of his life in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. These things is important to talk about, for these things are for us to do as Christians. It is God's will for his children, if he or she goes through suffering, to commit themselves to God in the pain. 1 Peter 4 verse 19, Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. It's God's will for his children to suffer for doing good and not to suffer for doing evil. 1 Peter 3.17, For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. It is the will of God for us Christians to continue in good works, not as a means to be saved, but as a means of showing the works of God in our lives. 1 Peter 2.15, For this is the will of God, that in by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. It is the will of God for us Christians to live thankful lives. For the Christian, every day should be a day of thanksgiving to the Lord, and not just once a year. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you have a job to work in, and it is God's will for you not to cheat your boss, like I'm pretending to work when the boss is around and relaxing when the boss is not around. Even if the boss does not see you, God sees you. Ephesians 6 Verse 5 and 6, bond servants be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ, and not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. <clears throat> it is those who are concerned to do God's will that Jesus calls his brothers sisters and mother mark 3 verse 35 for whoever does the will of god is my brother and my sister and mother the will of god is important for the <clears throat> for the christian to do and to do it with endurance never giving up so we can receive the promise of eternal life in the end hebrews 10:36 for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. The New Testament epistles tell us to do something or not um, to do it, or we should listen to it and obey it. We should read it, listen to God's word, and obey. For there we get our information on God's will for our lives. It is true it is a true mark of a believer if you are concerned with God's will because those who do not concern themselves to do God's will are not saved and they will go to hell no matter how much they say they are believers and love the Lord in Matthew 7 verse 21 23 Jesus states not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to, to them, I never knew you. 
Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Jesus said, If you love him, you will obey him. John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. So we're called to do the will of God in our lives. We're called to find it. And the scripture is filled with the will of God. We're not left in a blind alley on knowing God's will in certain situations when we have a whole library of 66 books to be our guide. This is our source along with prayer to find out the revealed will of God. It's true we're not under the law. We're under grace. We're under the New Testament. But yet, the Old Testament gives us many examples of those who have done the will of God and have prospered in their lives. And, and we've seen those who have not done the will of God and they have been destroyed to their own hurt. God bless you and I'll see you in the next program of Kings of Jesus. Bye. If you enjoy this program, feel free to make a copy and give it to a friend. And that way, they will get to know Jesus as well. Bye.